Let go. We got a lot to cover, man, so let's skip the small talk. I love all y'all. Every layer that we unpeel together. <laughs> Who got the drive? Hi, Mark got the drive. Love, man. This brother's bringing out, man. <laughs> oh, boy, man. Uh, one of those classrooms I always pull up first, man. Try to pull up my seat first, man. Let us find the truth. Keeping that library going. Ah, man. Everybody dropping this great drop. Activate someone you don't know. We're going to get into Morocco. Miss D in the Copper Color Wagon and keeps it fluid. I think she's on part eight or nine. I mean, I put one up so you can get the rest. You know what I'm saying? So you get there, you get all that water. You get parts one through eight or nine or ten that she got going because the sister's putting in work. So this will lead you to the water. All right? Let's go. No time for the play play. Ah, Zoner been compact, Bible dictionary, ham, not the Negro. And we're talking about divine order here, y'all. So when we look at the piece of the pie, we say, is this divine order or is this the celestial hijack? Is this the world that the creator sees? A Mexico, Morocco. Or is this the world of Moab? Is this the world of Thoth? And is Thoth representing the greatest light, the greater light, the most high, the highest frequency? Or a frequency that must run from the angels of the firmament? Come on, let go. So you can get this right out that compact, you know, Zondervan, you know, this is put together, man, by. You know, the, uh, you know, so-called Jewish, you know what I'm saying, scholars of what they put together. But this is some of the stuff that kind of gets left behind, that little breadcrumbs, you know, you can follow to correlate with everything that you're finding to be reality. And the reality is that we're tribal and we're getting into tribes and without us getting stuck in names and titles, we can... At least know what we've been snatched away from and what we need to unify with. We need to know what we're being forced to unify to, what we're being syncretized on, and what we need to separate to be hijack free. Now it says in Zonervan Compact Bible Dictionary that Ham is not the Negro. And we know this, but let's connect, come on. Now, Ham, which is not the Negro. So, again, when you see Ham, Ham, we're not talking Negro. And we're going to get real specific. Specifically, when we say Negro, we're talking in the context of Negro, Hebo, Hebo Negro. Not just black people that are called Negroes or Moors or... Some other title meaning great or big or strong or whatever. We're talking about Negro, Hebo, Ebo, Hebri, Ebers, a lineage specifically of Jacob. Yaegua. Yaegu. So we're not talking about Yaegu. We're not talking about no tribes coming out of, you know what I'm saying? Look, man, we're just talking about Shem. I mean, when it comes down to it, people, we're just talking Shem. We're not even talking Ham. When it comes to who really jam you clean up. I mean, yeah, the Egyptians this and that this, but... <laughs> I mean, who really... <laughs> ah, was a thorn in your side to get you into this level of stupor? Who was rocking with Thoth? And the sultan to get you to this shit. I mean, who was enslaving your ass for this one world order? Oh, when Atlantis was rocking 
It was the center of it all, wasn't it? And when it fell, I said when Atlantis was rocking, it was the center of it all, wasn't it? Atlantis, the Moroccan Empire, under the Pharaoh's permission. So no matter what these Moabites do and where they go, they need permission from Thothborn. Now, if Thothborn has to run from the angels of the firmament, oh, we'll get that. We'll get that. We're going right into tablet eight. Pull it up. Emerald tablets. Let's go. If Thoth has to run from the greater light, the angels that protect the greater light, then how is this the divine order? Let's keep asking that question. Let's make this a running theme throughout this part five of the Moor, the Moabite, the Muhammad, the Baphomet, the Belus. Is this the highest order or the underworld order underneath the barrier? Hijacking all of this for Ham, the dominion of Ham, the dominion of Cush, father and son. Ah, so the Moabites are always under the Pharaoh. They're always under Thoth. And we say, why? Now, Ham is the youngest son of Noah, probably born about 96 years before the flood. Right? And one of the eight persons to live through the flood, according to the Zondervan. He became the progenitor or father of the dark races. All the dark races. But not the Negro, Hebo, Ibri. But the Egyptians, Ethiopians, Libyans, Canaanites, Canaan, land of Canaan. Joshua's clearing out Canaanites. We read Joshua 1, some Joshua 3. We read some Jeremiah 28 last time. So this is a running theme here. Those who are attaching themselves, Psalms 83, making a confederacy against these Negroes because all these dark races are in cahoots against the Negroes because Ham is the progenitor of the dark race, but not the Negroes. But wait, there's more. This ain't Ham, but yet they are in Confederacy with Ham, these Esau Edomites, these Moab Moabites, Morocco. They're in Confederacy with Ham, these Moabite Morocco, but only if. I mean, they're in Confederacy with the ones that are the progenitors of all these dark races that are all one family, but not the Negro. And they are in a confederacy only if the Moabites understand one thing. That this Moroccan empire can only exist under the Pharaoh's permission. Now when they made the Treaty of Tripoli and, you know, did this whole other thing. And now there's a new Pharaoh in town, right? We're calling them presidents. We're calling them the king, the pharaoh, the president, el president. And their Moroccan law and their Moroccan empire and their Moroccan treaties. And we got that before. You know, their own, you know, zodiac situation only exists under the pharaoh's permission. Whoever is pharaoh. Interesting. Wherever they rock, they need thought permission. Is this divine order? Emerald tablets, tablet eight. You got the link, you pull it up. Let's just jump in there, belly flop, belly flop. We're gonna go right in the middle of it. It's a big, long chunk, so we're going right in the middle, right where it says, list ye, old man, let's go. I suggest you read it all, man, because it is juicy, juicy drop. For the initiated. So Thoth. 
Remember, you need permission from thought, right, Moab? Morocco, you need permission from thought wherever you go. Oh, the thought is so kind to let it settle here. The God of the underworld is so kind that we should make a deal, a treaty, wherever these pharaohs are. Listen, old man. <laughs> old man, listen, says Thoth. Tuck Moses to Uti. I, Ra. To the depth of my wisdom, speak I of knowledge. We'll get into this knowledge hidden from man. Far have I been on my journey through space-time, even to the end of space of this cycle. Thoth is doing cycles outside of his body. He's in space-time, and space and time is only relative to the god of space and time. They like to call it Saturn. But what happens when you're off the clock? What happens when you're above the firmament? The firmament. <laughs> Remember, the firmament and barrier equals firmament. So the barrier and the firmament, hashtag firmament, get with it or get left off. Now, this firmament, this barrier, this firmament, when Thoth goes on his space-time voyages cycling outside of his body, even to the end of space of this cycle, A, whoa, glimpsed. The hounds of the barrier, the firmament. I'm gonna put that on the shirt. Firmament. Done. A. Glimpse the hounds. We'll call them angels. Since Thoth calls them hounds, we'll call them angels. You'll see why. A. Glimpse the hounds of the barrier lying in wait for he who would pass them. So these hounds of the barrier are lying in wait. Wishing a nigga would. Oh, Thoth, oh, Dweller, oh, Lucifer, anybody, any hijack. Christ, I dare you to try to get above this barrier, Christ. Anything that says that my children have to come through them to get to me, I dare you to cross this space-time barrier, man. That's what these hounds, these angels are saying at the barrier. Lying in wait for he who would pass them, they waiting on it. In that space where time exists not, there is no time, people. Only below the barrier is there time. And they rule you with this time, and you're on the clock, you're punching the clock, and time don't even exist. I mean, Thoth is telling you all the drop, the hootie is laying it out for you, Duck Moses, the one you need permission from, Moab, to settle anywhere. In that space where time exists not faintly, I sense the guardians of cycles. So now they're called guardians before they were called hounds. Now they're guardians, guardian angels, protecting the firmament, <laughs> the farrier, the uh, firmament, the barrier. I said the farrier, the firmament. All right, man, it's three, it's four o'clock in the morning, man. Deal with it. So faintly, I sense the guardians of the cycle. So these guardian angels are guardians of cycles, angels of these cycles, guarding above, guarding the cycles from above the barrier, below the barrier, beyond where time exists. Now, what happens when Thoth sees these angels of the barrier? And again, if there's a barrier, I mean, let's just come on, man. Flow with me. I know it's late for me. It might be early for you. Let's go. What barrier is Thoth running from, which you'll see? What does he do when he sees, look, if there's a barrier, then what is Thoth not telling you? What does Thoth not know? And why do you need permission from the Pharaoh to make this a Moroccan empire? Moabites. Or over here, why are they upset that Joshua was booting out Canaanites? And that they had to set back up over here. Because it started here, the hijack. And all this is Atlantis, not just this. All this is Atlantis. And part of it went down. And the other parts, they tried to inhabit and stay there. And Joshua, Moses is leading them in. Kicking out Canaanites. And they're setting up here after that. Then they come back. Set up their Moroccan empire again. 
come back and get reinforcements and now your ass is in slavery and you don't know who you are today and they want to recruit you back into the Mo Moroccan Atlantean Thothology Hermes Trigamagistus There go so what hounds of the barrier thoughts now that you have admitted there's a barrier between you and something else or anybody who worship your energy and something else lying in wait for he would pass him in that space where time exists not faintly I sense the guardians of cycles move they only through angles angels move in angles free are they not from curved dimensions so these angels are only moving in specific angels angles Strange and terrible are the hounds of the barrier. The angels of the barrier follow their consciousness to the limits of space. So they're space conscious angels. <laughs> they are guarding consciousness itself. They're guarding the water, the flow itself. They're guarding the flow above the barrier that is pure water. They're guarding pure water. They're guarding consciousness itself. Now what happens, Thoth? Come on, Thoth. Follow their consciousness to the limits of space. Think not to escape by entering your body. For follow they fast the soul through angles. Only the circle will give you protection. Save from the claws of the dwellers in angles. Ah. <laughs> so the creator got the goons protecting the house. They're scared to death of the goons that protect your frequency. He's telling you or telling his people move in circles because they only move in angles. Now you get it. Circle the square. The square represents the angles of the angels that are protecting the firmament, the firmament, <laughs> the energy above the above the barrier. And every time they get too close to your frequency, they have to flee. They have to run. So these little punks got to run every time they get close to your house. And they want to act like this is whose house? Their house. But they run when they get too close to your house or your energy. But while you're not connected to it, they run you. Free are they, not in curved dimension. Strange and terrible are these hounds or angels of the barrier. Follow their consciousness to the limits of space. Think not to escape by entering your body. For follow they fast the soul through angles. Only the circle will give you protection. The circle... The cross and the circle. Here we go with the cross and the circle. Save the claws of the dwellers and angles. Once in a time pass. Oh, okay, Thoth, let's pull up a seat, man. Thoth's about to tell us a story about his confrontation with the goons of your father's house. Your framer and your shaper, your mother and father, the energy, the 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 true wisdom that gives mother energy to mother earth your mother and father the framer and the shape of the vibration the vibration we're gonna get some of this vibration right now once in a time past i approached the great barrier oh thought got close to the firmament before and saw on the shores where time exists not so again what thought is seeing is beyond time your creator is beyond time you are not bound to it wake up the formless forms of the hounds of the barrier so they're formless angels protecting the firmament formless moving in angles they protect the firmament a hiding in the midst beyond time i found them i found these formless angels beyond time and they Sending me afar off. So these angels said, what the feezy? I sense me some static. They raised themselves and gave the great bell cry. Like blowing the shafar. They blew the horn. They said, hold up. Somebody is trespassing on this vibration. Someone is not vibrating. So they raised themselves and gave the, the great bell cry. That could be heard from cycle to cycle, man. That is called vibration, the framer and the shaper. So they got that vibration 
that can be felt and heard from cycle to cycle and move through space towards my soul. What did you do, Thoth? I mean, what did you do? What did you do, Thoth, that that they have to get permission from these Moroccan, these Moabites have to get permission from this Thoth, this Moroccan empire, this Ham and Kush. Ham and Kush, but Ham is again not the Negro. So the Negro seems to be getting the short end of the stick that combines everybody but the Negro. Everybody but the Negro. Since the Negro's not Ham or Kush. Oh, is the Negro Shem? Well, sure. But we're getting real specific with these Hebo Hebos. We're going into this lineage here. And those that are outside of it are functioning against the house of the Creator. So, Thoth, what did you do when you saw these formless angels of the firmament? Fled I fast. I ran. I got the fuck out of sight. What? How did you get out of sight, Thoth? Fled I fast before them, back from time's unthinkable end. Whoa. So you went to the end of time, you fled back. But ever after me pursued they, moving in strange angles not known to man. What ang what ang what angles are not known to you? Whatever these angles are, is what these angels were moving in. <laughs> A on the gray shores of time spaces end found I the hounds of the barrier, ravening for the soul. Who attempts the beyond? Anybody trying to get beyond your vibrational layer has protection. For these angels are your protection. You have protection. And anybody trying to get past this barrier are fleeing fast. So found I the hounds of the barrier ravening for the soul who attempts the beyond. Fled I through circles back to my body. Fled fast after me they followed. A after me the devourers followed. Thoth is shitting his pants right now. He's telling you a story about being scared to death by a greater energy than he. Yet you need his permission to settle, Moabites. Seeking through. See, we need the creator's permission. The creator says, I give you a promised land. We follow that directly. Above the barrier frequency. You need Thoth. To settle anywhere. Under the Pharaoh's permission. Fled I through circles back to my body. Fled and fast after me. They followed A after me. The devourers followed. Seeking through angles to devour my soul. Oh y'all thought Thoth was soulless. He has a soul. He wants to be free. And these angels, if they catch him, will devour his soul. How, Thoth? How, Tahuti? How, Pharaoh? How will they devour your soul? How will the Creator devour your soul? Hey, know ye, man. No, man. He's, he's begging you, man. He's like, hey, man, know this, man. That soul who dares the barrier, man, whoever dares to get close to, this, to the firmament, may be held in bondage. By the hounds from beyond time. Held till this, till this cycle is completed. And left behind when the consciousness leaves. Yeah, consciousness. You know, it's that thing you're swimming in. That thing you think that you are without. It is the creator. It is the frequency. It is above the barrier. But if you get too close to the barrier. Hey man, know this man, says Thoth. That the soul who dares the barrier. One, if you know there's a barrier, then you have to know, do I serve the frequency above the barrier or below? I said, if you know that there's a barrier, you got to know that if you serve the frequency above the ferry barrier or the barrier below, the <laughs> which one are you serving, man, above or below? Real talk. You got to know if you're serving the frequency above the firmament or below it. There is a barrier. Your man thought. Yo, man, Tut Moses is telling you this. And if there's a barrier, what side is he on? And if he's fleeing from what he's going to call the greater light. 
then you need to choose up. When I say choose up, I'm saying choose up in frequency. Even if you were fooled, we all were. Let's go. Hey, know ye man that the soul who dares the barrier may be held in bondage by the hounds from beyond time, held till this cycle is completed and left behind when the consciousness leaves. So thought is telling you that whatever is above the barrier, above the firmament, is consciousness itself. And if the angels that are protecting the firmament, protecting the barrier, catch your ass, again, that the soul who dares the barrier may be held in bondage. You will get held in bondage, which is why Thoth is fleeing, which is why he says even the dweller has to flee. Anyone who is caught will be held and left behind when the consciousness leaves. What do we say? Get with it or get left on. Either get with it or get left on. The consciousness will leave you. Consciousness has you surrounded. Truth has you surrounded. Reality has you surrounded. It's the greater light. It's the thing you're swimming in. It's the thing you're surfing on. It's you. It's your inner Merkaba, your inner energy, your magnetic field, your electricity, your copper conductivity. Entered I, my body, created the circles that know not angles, created the form that from my form was formed. What? So first thought is warning you that, man, if you get caught by these angels above the firmament, they will catch your ass and keep you in bondage. Now, these angels are beyond time and they will hold you until the cycle is complete and you will be left behind when the consciousness leaves. Get with it or get left on. Entered I by body, created the circles that know not angles. So they got to create circles that don't even know angles to outrun the angels that move in angles. Created the form that from my form was formed. Made my body into a circle and lost the pursuers in the circles of time. You're back to playing the time game with these timeless, formless angels of the barrier, the firmament. But even yet, when free from my body, cautious must I be not to move through angles. He's warning you. He's saying he got to be super cautious that he don't move through angles. Else my soul may never be free. Circle the Square, square the circle. What's it going to be? You have to circle the square and move in curves that have little known angles. Or else you will be held in bondage till the cycle is complete and be left on. Get your ass left behind when the consciousness leaves. Now let's go. He said, right here, right here. Cautious ever I must be not to move through angles, else my soul may never be free. Well, Thoth, Thoth wants to be free. Thoth, we want to be free too. I mean, Thoth, if you want to be free, surely you understand the concept of freedom. Surely you know that you can't just take all our shit. Surely you know that although these Negroes are not ham. And they're being gained up on by everybody. These dark races. Yet the order is complete. The vibration has been spoken. These Hebos. These sons of Shem. The other dark race. Oh, these Shemites. <laughs> the other dark races. Have enemies of their own. And when these enemies join the progenitors of Ham, you have one world order. But we live in the creator's world, the greater light world. We live in a world where the creator has to give you that pass. And since the creator allowed you to have your lots and you were not satisfied with them, it is to a fault that you pursue any more of this derision.
<laughs> this illusion of a kingdom, this Moroccan empire, this is an illusion sold to you by thought, who you have to get permission from in America, under the Pharaoh's permission, the Moroccan empire can exist in America. Now we get to higher march drop where all this Grand Canyon, all this Egypt is being pulled up, which is what we were digging with the Horace Butler situation. Clearly we hit a nerve because not only is it digging up here, it was hijacking us here. And that's what Horace Butler did not want us to talk about since his name is Horace. Get it? He is not <laughs> trying to hear that shit. He enjoys being under the Pharaoh's permission. He enjoys it starting with Atlantis. He enjoys it starting with the celestial chaos. But this is not the creator's vision for the earth. This is not how the creator divided the earth. Because you see no representation of Shem. Now even the Moabites know that. So they say, well, the whole thing is Shem. We represent Shem. We are Morocco. See? We're representing for Shem. <laughs> Uh, the creator already uh, has a order that represents for sure. But I guess that's where the family uh, feud begins, right? We we're just talking Shem. I mean, even in the Kabra Nagas by E.A. Wallace Budge concerning the king of Moab. And the king of Moab is the seed of Shem. And we will inform you how this hath come to pass when God made Abraham to depart from his father's country into the land of Quran, Haram. He made Lot to pass over into the land of Saddam and Gomorrah. And when God wished to blot out the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, he sent his angels, Michael and Gabriel, to bring out Lot and to burn up the cities of Saddam and Gomorrah. Now, is this the same Gabriel that Thoth says he is? Or is this a classic example of, like we're going to get into OSB, these angels would take names and name themselves names that the mortals were desire, desirable names for the mortals. So they were hijacking names that these mortals knew and, and acting like that. Oh, yeah, I'm this Gabriel that your ancestors talked about. And they were hijacking these names. So I don't believe that this Gabriel is the same as the Thoth Gabriel. I think those are two different Gabriels. But to bring out Lot and to burn up the cities of Saddam and Gomorrah. They destroyed them and brought out Lot with his children. So think about it. If this Gabriel is the creator's Gabriel, he brings out Lot. Lot has Moab. So these Moabites have a lot to be thankful to for Gabriel. But when Muhammad comes and he's saying he's being raised up by Gabriel, he's bringing out the same Gabriel that saved Lot out of Sodom and Gomorrah. But now they're hijacking this Gabriel with Thoth and Muhammad. And it's not the same Gabriel from the greater light. The greater light. Let's get back to the greater light. So we're moving. We're in tablet eight. Come on. Flow with it. Swim in this consciousness. <laughs> now check it. Thoth wants to be free. He's saying, but even yet, when when free from my body, cautious ever I must be not to move through angles, else my soul may never be free. Know ye. He's warning you again. The hounds of the barrier move only in angles and never through curves of space. Only by moving through curves can ye escape them. For in angles they will pursue thee. Oh man, he, he my warning. He's scared to death, man. Trembling, talking about this greater light. Seek not to break open the gate to beyond. For there are, for there are few, few there are who have succeeded in passing the barrier to the greater light that shines beyond. We're talking about the timeless zone, the zone without time that contains the greater light that shines beyond. Stop. If there's a greater light that shines beyond, then surely there's a divine plan for the earth. And is this in cahoots in conjunction with that divinity? Or is that divinity something that is unknown to you, Thoth, Morocco, under the permission of the pharaoh atlantis poseidon poseidon do you even know the barrier have you even gone how close have you got to this barrier poseidon thoth oh thoth will tell you how close he got 
He, he tells you right here, few there are who have succeeded in passing the barrier. What few do you think that is, my children? Uh, let's think about it. Uh, Elijah? Isaiah? What, Moses? What, Abraham? I mean, it must be a very, Ezra, Edris, it must be a very few that have actually, Ezekiel, that have actually passed the barrier to the greater light that shines beyond. What does the creator tell you? Just be in order so you can have a frequency above the barrier. What is 432? 4 plus 3 plus 2 is 9. It is a frequency, a light code, tuning you up to a frequency above the barrier to the greater light that shines beyond. So if Thoth is telling you there's a greater light, then he's also telling you there's a lesser light. And is this the divine plan of the greater light or the lesser light? I'll wait. Ain't this the plan that failed? Wasn't Atlantis sunk by the creator? Wasn't Egypt sunk by the creator? Is this the greater light? Or the lesser light? Now let's get the rest of this quickly. Because it gets even better. Few there are who succeed. First man, oh man, he my warning, see, seek not to break open the gate to beyond. So there is a gate to beyond, don't even go through it. Few there are who have succeeded in passing the firmament, the barrier, the firmament, to the greater light that shines beyond. That's the energy of Israel. Yashra. That's the energy of Ephraim and Judah and Manasseh. That's in your that's Reuben, that's Simeon. It's the seed, the life. They trace it through the Ruth, Ruth the Moabitess. You got to get into that Isaac, uh, excuse me, that uh, Irvin Reed drop. Right? Love to all the family, man. Isaac Ford and all the man. I mean, let me tell you, everyone's going through a lot to get this to you. So, what Greater light shines beyond the barrier that is protected from the by the formless angels of the firmament. For ye, for know ye ever the dwellers seek such souls to hold in their thrall. So they're saying that these dwellers, what they're calling dwellers or angels that are protecting the barrier, that are protecting the greater light, know that these angels seek such souls to hold in their thrall. So these angels that the creator has will keep their ass in check, will hold their ass in bondage, will take their soul away, devour their soul, even thought born. Listen, old man. Come on, man. Listen to me, man. It's thought, man. Heed my warning, man. Seek ye to move not in angles but curves. And if while free from the body, though thou hearest the sound like the bay of a hound. So, man, if you free... From the body, you're doing your Scientology, you're doing your, your chemistry, <laughs> your alchemy, and you're doing your cycles outside of your body. My brother, listen, old man, and heed my warning. Seek ye to move in angles, not in angles, but curves. And if while free from thy body, thou hearest the sound like the bay of a hound, you hear the chauffeur, you hear that horn ringing clear and bell-like through thy being. What rings through your being but vibration, man? You feel that vibration. You feel the creative. Flee back to thy body in circles. Penetrate not the mist before thee. Stop. Don't penetrate that mist. Go back to your body but move in circles. When thou hast entered the form thou hast dwelt in, when you go back to your body, here we go with the ankh. Here we go with the cross in the circle. Here we go. When thou hast entered the form thou hast dwelt in, use thou the cross and the circle combined. Oh, no, nah, man. It's the womb. It stands for the mother, the, the mother energy. Yeah, okay, okay. But you need this shit to save your life, to save your soul from being devoured. Open thy mouth and use thy voice. Utter the word, utter the word, and thou shalt be free. 
So y'all got a little magic science word that you speak, a vibration you speak through a cross and a circle that frees you from the goons of my father's house? You see, I don't need a little gadget and a safe word to free me from the goons of my own house. Not when I have the vibration running through me. And not when you have the vibration running through you, so-called Negro. So-called Negro, who is clearly not the, you know, son of, or, or, or you know, son of Ham. Not the Negro. Not the so-called Negro. Not the so-called Negro. Nah, not the so-called he bo he bri he bri So it's a family affair on this family tree. And thought is saying that, man, when you entered your body, use the cross and circle combined. Use that onk. Utter the word. Open your mouth. Use the voice. Speak the vibration. You're going to be free, man. Only the one who of light has the fullest can hope to pass by these guards on of the way. Light of has the light has only of one who of light has the fullest can hope. And then he must move through strange curves and angles. So who is this that has the light of the fullest, but is not the greater light? Is this a reference to the dweller? Is this a reference to his Lucifer, his master, who of the light has the fullest, but you know that there's a greater light. Few there are who have succeeded in passing the firmer met, the barrier. NASA calls it a Van Allen belt, a, a frequency belt, a oh a radioactive belt that we can't get through, but we do do it. We we get through it, but we don't know how. We've got to do it before, but it's still a problem for us. What vibration can't you penetrate? Few there are who have succeeded in passing a barrier to the greater light that shines beyond the creator. The greater light that has a greater plan. A greater plan than this. A greater light with a greater plan than this where you don't need the Pharaoh's permission. Okay. Wakey, wakey. So he's saying, all right, man, use that cross and circle combine. Open your mouth. Use the voice. Utter the word and thou shalt be free. Only the one who of light has the foolish can hope. Hope to pass by the guards, the angels of the way. And then must he move through strange curves and angles that are formed in direction not known to man. What are those? You have to do all this to get away from the goons, the angels protecting the barrier, the vibration of your creator's throne. You wake up, you go right into your father's house. They can't even get close to it. They must move through strange curves and angles that are formed in direction not known to man. One more time. Listen, old man, Thoth says. Listen, man, listen. One more again if you don't listen. Heed my warning. How many times I got to warn you, man? Stay away from this barrier. Attempt not to pass the guards on the way. Rather, should ye seek the gain of thy own light, don't try to pass the guards of the way. What's the way? It's the way to the greater light. Passing the barrier. I know you want to. I know you have 33 degrees and this degree and this magic science and this mystery school. I know it only goes so far and you do your cycles and you want to get past that barrier. You get greedy. You want it all. You want all the frequency. You want all the frequency for Morocco, the Moabite. Listen, old man, listen. And heed my warning, attempt not to pass the angels on this way, the way to the barrier. Rather should you seek to gain thy own light, go your own way, and make thyself ready to pass on the way. Do it yourself. Is he saying return to the creator? No, because he knows not the creator. 
He can't give you advice or something he don't know. He don't know the greater light. He's being, he's afraid of it. He's afraid of the greater light. Fled I through circles back to my body. Fled and fast after me they followed. This is what happens to the when he gets too close to the greater light. So he's also afraid of you. And they won't let you get close to it because they can't get close to it. So they hijack your frequency. Rather should ye go thy own light. Who does this sound like? What doctrine is this? Gain of thy own light. Make thyself ready to pass on the way. Light is thine ultimate end. O oh, my brother, seek and find ever the light on the way. But while you do that, man, <laughs> fled I fast before them back to times un back from times unthinkable end. So again, you exist in a frequency above time and space. But ever after me they pursue, pursue they moving in strange angles not known to man. Hey, on the great shores of time, spaces, in found I the hounds of the barrier. Ravening for the soul who attempts the beyond. So we're going to get back into so much flat drop. So we can get back into the firmament. You know that we're firm, fixed, and immovable. But all you need to know is that there's a barrier and it's being talked about in real time in these emerald tablets. Of this tough Moses, of this thought form, of this Pharaoh that they must receive permission from to settle on lands that's not theirs. And then have you wake up today not knowing who you are. You Negro, you this, you that. Oh, we're just all more. So let's all get our numbers for Morocco. But are you telling these Hebrews that you guys are rocking for Moab and the God Shamosh, Shamash, and Thoth? And this Islam connected to this Muhammad, connected to this Baphomet, connected to this Belus and this Baal with Bays and L's, Bays and L's and Baal's, and Belus's. Moab is Shem. Moab is Shem. And when all this uproar was being heard, the angel said unto Lot, Turn not around, ye have gone forth from the city. Turn not around, that you shall not die. Shall not die the death. But when Akmaba, Akmaba, the wife of Lot, heard this, she turned around, and she became a pillar of salt. And she exists to this day, to this very day. As for Lot, God made him to dwell in the mountains of Ararat. And he planted a new vineyard, and his daughters made their father to drink wine, and they plotted a wicked plot. And they said, How, how, why shall the possession of our fathers be wasted or blotted out? Our mother has been destroyed on the road, and there is no one to marry us here. Oh, so they need a man to marry, so they go get their daddy now. Look, any of this could be this and this and that. Of course, they're going to say, Oh, man. The oppressor put that in there, man, just to make us look bad. Well, I don't care how you look. I don't care if you came from the immaculate birth. I don't care if Moab came from immaculate conception. If this is Moab's perception of the world, then it is a hijacked perception for Moab. It is an illusion. When it's going to Thoth and it's connected to Thoth and Hermes Trigamagistus, Hermes Trigamagistus. According to ancient Arab genealogist Muhammad the prophet, who was also believed to have traveled to the heavens on the night of Isra and Maraj, is a direct, direct descendant, or is Hermes Trigamagistus Thoth. So you can't get away from it in Islamic tradition, Muhammad tradition. So says Sayyid Ahmed Amaruddin, pointing out that Hermes Trigamagestus has a major place in Islamic tradition. He writes, Hermes Trigamagestus is mentioned in the Quran in verse 19, 56, 57, in the book of Isdris, in the book Isdris, that he was a truthful prophet, prophet, truthful, a prophet. This is your prophet. We took him to a high place. The Jabarian corpus contains the oldest documented source for the Emerald Tablet of Hermes Trigamagestes. 
all connected with this Quran and this Emerald Tablet. It's in the Muhammad and the thought that remember and will always be. We done showed you before. We done showed you. We're going to show you again very shortly. Let's just get it. Let's just get it. Let's just go. We just talking thought born. We just talking Hermes chicken against these. And we uh got cut off actually here in the origin of Mohammedans. But first I just wanted to, you know, grab some of this, man, because I don't think we spent enough time on it. So I'm back, uh, backed up a couple pages. 720, go, go to 728, pull up his joint, go to the drop library, click it there, click the link below, let's go. So their Lord, when you see the Lord, that also means a fallen angel. It does not mean the creator, right? These are orders of angels. So their Lord, the Lord said, now behold, Louis Mong. Now Louis Mong is also called Christ stood no longer upon the practice of righteousness but upon might so now thoth has an issue with his big homie louis mong he is a sub god to this louis mong according to this particular doctrine document all right so it's giving you the orders of these angels it's kind of giving you a look behind the curtain you know look behind you know what's really going on all right so this louis mong Who's the big homie of Thoth. And now Thoth is upset with his big homie. And what happens? You have war against Christians and Muslims. Christians. Louis Mong's people. And Thoth's people. Now who's watching this happen? And, and in the middle of it. Preston John King David. These Hebos. These Hebrews. Now he's at war against the Muslims. And he's trying to. They're trying to recruit him into this Christian thing, but they people are never even being being returned whenever they send it him. So he's not rocking with the Christians or the Muslims, which is what a Hebrew does. Now let's get into these angels. Louis Mong stood no longer upon the practice of righteousness, but upon might. Neither considered he more the resurrection of mortals or angels, the craft and wisdom of Baal, Baal baffled Louis Mong in both his heavenly battles and his battles for mortals, bays and L's, alright, against these Christians, bays and L's against the Christians of Louis Mong. Behold, the whole of the countries of Egypt, Parsi, Helis, Europa, were in war, and the heavens of these countries were also in war, with hundreds of hells within them. <laughs> So you had the celestial wars happening above and this happening below. These are the Christian Muslim wars and this is the angels that's warring with them. Angels have always chosen sides of mortals, right? So Louis Mong fought no longer for the Trinity nor the Holy Ghost. Ah, so Louis Mong was a part of the Trinity fighting for it. Now he wasn't. But to save his heavenly kingdom, lest he be captured and cast into hell. Now, Louis Monk formed his own trinity that they're pushing as this Holy Ghost, Son, Father thing. Let's go. This is where it's coming from, the false Christ. So he stopped fighting for the trinity, nor the Holy Ghost. But to save his heavenly kingdom, lest he be captured and cast into hell. Who's hell? Another angel's hell. They're, remember, they had how many hells? All right, this, all this concept comes from them, this hell. Let's go. With hundreds of hells within them. So the heavens of these countries were also at war with hundreds of hells within them. So even more desperately was Baal situated against him. In the meantime, the other two triunes or of fallen angels began to war against each other in their heavenly kingdoms contending for boundaries and subjects boundaries and subjects boundaries and subjects these angels are all right let's put it together y'all let's go boundaries and subjects 
Here we go. Thoth. Who's Thoth? Fleeing from the angels of the firmament. Fleeing from the angels of the barrier. Moving in circles not known. Speaking through the circle and the cross. Let's go. Thoth sent the following message to Luimon, his big homie. Greetings to thee, thou most high triune, in the name of the Holy Ghost. All right, so this is Hijack 101. Wherein I am embarrassed, I pray thee, give me leniency. My suit is not without due deliberation and through prayers to the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Who's this Holy Ghost, right? Long have I fought thy battles, and I have gained great power and authority in many kingdoms in heaven and on earth. But behold, I labor against gods who have the advantage of me. The Chinye, rebel gods, and the Vinyu, rebel gods, that fled from the triune kingdoms in the east. So these are all fallen angels fighting. Have taken upon themselves names popular with mortals. So I just said, he took Gabriel. They all took these different aliases. Let's, let's look at some of these aliases. So these kingdoms, he's... Telling his big homie, these angels, these triune kingdoms of the east have taken upon themselves names popular with mortals. Witness these names. Nestor. <coughs> popular with mortals. Alias Puith. Neptune. Alias Poseidon. <laughs> Oleus. Alias Pandor. Priam. Alias Hogarth. Phobos. Alias Akwakox. All right. So it goes down. There's a lot of these names. I'm going to kind of go quick. All right? But I do see Hermes, a.k.a. Belus. Belus, Hermes, Trigamagistes. Belus, Hermes. You see Brahma. You see all these names. Let's go. You see Vishnu. All right. Thoth continued. And yet... These are not all, for these gods have no fear of the Holy Ghost, and they choose any name that will be flattering to mortals, and the magicians and priests and such others as have power to hear the voices of spirits are led to believe that they hear the very gods whose names are given. This is then, this then is my misfortune, thou most Holy God of the triune. He's not talking about the creator. He's not talking about what's above the barrier. Remember, he runs from that. So he's only talking celestial. And I'm only saying you're in a celestial hijack. Living a celestial illusion. Which doesn't exist. Because time doesn't exist. So I am commanded to give but one name, even the Holy Ghost or the Father to the mortals. So these mortals are commanding him to give them one name. Now, or whether my angel hosts speak to the oracles or to persons capable of hearing spirits and saying to them, fight ye for the Holy Ghost or fight ye for the creative element. So they're trying to find a name that will sell your ass. What can they sell you on? Pay attention. What did they sell you on, so-called Negro? Here is behind the curtain of them trying to decide how to package the product, how to package the white, how to package the Mali. <coughs> they're trying to package. They're trying to brand the hijack. Pay attention. This is the branding of the hijack. I'll be, man, look. We don't know where we're going, but we're flowing. And when we get there, we know it. All right, so let's go. Fight ye for the Holy Ghost and fight ye for the creative element. Mortals heed us not. So these mortals, you were not heeding that shit. Holy Ghost, creative element. Or they in irre irreverently mock us. So they were getting mocked, saying, What care we for a God that is but a ghost, a shadow, a creative element? Give us gods that talk. Uh, that's what these people were telling them, the people that they, you know, were serving them. These nations that were serving them said, give us gods that talk and of themselves. We want no angels from the Holy Ghost. Bring us your gods and let the oracles tell us what they say. So they kept saying, oh, we're the 
we're representing the gods. And they said, nah, we want the gods. All right, you kept asking for more. So what do they want? So Louis Mong then sent messengers and a suitable escort to Jerusalem on the earth where Thoth was stationed at the time. Now Thoth is stationed in Jerusalem, people. The house of Israel, people. The house of Israel coming through Shem, through Isaac, through Jacob, the Israelites, people. Then why is Thoth in the house of Israelites. Is he hijacking Israel? Let's go. So Louis Mong, the false Christ, sent messengers and a suitable escort to Jerusalem on earth where Thoth was stationed at the time with an angel host of warriors commanding his presence before his holy council in Hapsindi, Louis Mong's heavenly city and kingdom. So Thoth was summoned from Jerusalem from jamming you up. Excuse me, I'll be right back, he says. <laughs> now after Thoth went thither and they held a council of many days, a disturbance arose in the council in consequence of the heat of the debates. So now you got the Muslims and Christians debating in heaven. Let's go. For the gods of the council, for the most part, said, What better are we than Jehovians? Jehovians. They're calling the creator Jehovah. So they're, they're saying, Well, what, what, what better are we than, than these, uh, you know, followers of, 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 of this greater light that exists? You know, we mock them because, you know, you know, uh, you know, where's their evidence of their connection to this greater light? We have no connection with this greater light. So, so how are we better than them? What greater power have we than the Jehovians who can answer, who can answer the philosophy of Thoth? What's Thoth's philosophy? Remember, he's hijacking these Jehovians. He's in Jerusalem right now. <laughs> so, you know, what can, who can answer this philosophy of Thoth? Is it a truth? Mortals have never been satisfied with an angel from the gods. They want the God himself. Mortals are not satisfied with the hijack. They're not just satisfied with the messenger. They want the God himself. Was not this forever the weakness of the Jehovah's? This is what they're trying to exploit as a weakness that the creator didn't just do everything they wanted the creator to do whenever they wanted the creator to do it. They had to be in order. Was it their weakness or in strength? Did the creator always reveal the vibration? Such angels could give no name that mortals knew since they falsely assumed a name. Hence their weakness compared to such angels as unscrupulously assumed to be gods. So what angels are we assuming to be gods today? We all knew these things before our holy confederacy. Psalms 83 confederacy was formed. Yea, one of the chief reasons for forming a confederacy in heaven was that we might more effectually overcome the power of evil, what they're calling evil spirits or spirits more twisted than them over mortals. In that day, we said, the three persons, the son, listen, in that day, this is Louis Ma, in that day, the son, the father, and Holy Ghost would enable us to appear in person and with authority unto mortals. So that's what's their plan through this hijack story of this son, father, and Holy Ghost. They're a triune of fallen angels of celestial under the barrier, enabling them to appear in person and with authority. This gave them authority unto these hijacked mortals. Behold, it had now come to pass. Mortals desire a more definite God, one known unto them who cannot truthfully take the name of any God Thoth has named. We cannot truthfully take the name of any God Thoth has named, nor of any God worshipped by mortals. So they cannot truthfully 
take the name of the gods that Thoth has already named, nor the gods that are being worshipped by these mortals. Louis Mong then drove him, then drove hence from the palace his holy council that he might have an opportunity to reason with himself as to what he should do. So this Louis Mong is trying to reason how he can get you know this 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 name situation to hijack you further so look we will read a part of this it says satan satan all right so here comes this satan now satan is head honcho over all these cats and what does satan say entereth the holy so this is their master entereth the holy council of hindens hap hapsindi and speaketh unto louis mong the triune hear me all right, so this is Satan, according to the OSB. Let's go. Hear me, O thou most upright of gods. Mine is a tale of pity and of horrors, for thy people behold. Thy one-time brother triunes have a, had great advantage of thee from the start. They had more populous kingdoms and subjects of higher grades. Nevertheless, wherein they have prospered, they shall be wise. They have found it necessary to have a name that mortals could call unto the name and they took upon themselves the names brahma and buddha christ <laughs> both of which signify knowledge which is why the osb says that knowledge is equivalent with christ or with brahma and buddha nor mere no more no less so they took brahma and buddha both of which signify knowledge no more no less this hath satisfied mortals now thou shalt choose the name Christ. So Satan is telling Louis Mong that now he should choose the name Christ. <laughs> Ain't you worshiping Christ today, so-called Negro? Satan gave Louis Mong that name, the angel Louis Mong, which you will meet in the afterlife if you call on him. But you will be bound in his celestial heaven, which will be your hell. Now thou shalt choose the name Christ, which is the Amic, Ahamic, Amic word for knowledge. So Christ meant knowledge in this Ahamic. You're just saying knowledge. In this, then thou shalt have truth on thy side in heaven before the Holy Council, and on earth thou shalt have a personal embodiment by calling on Christ. Then it says, Louis Mong falsely announces himself the Christ. The Lord said, Behold, it came to pass, as had been foretold by God, their God. Right? They, they call him Jehovah's Son. The triunes will all become false gods because they have denied the Almighty, the Creator. So this God they're calling the Jehovah's Son or Creator's Son says. So they have, in this document, they have a son of the creator they call jehovah's son but he is not the one saying come through me he is just an energy that they're calling his son so this guy this son <laughs> says there is but one who is all knowledge so by calling himself christ knowledge he is a false christ because he is kicking false knowledge whatsoever angel or god announces himself to be all knowledge which is christ or Buddha, or Brahma, is all false. Is false in presence of who they're calling Jehovah, or Hawa, or the Creator, or Heya Heya. All right. So, before the Creator, it's a false knowledge. Christ only means true, right? So, you know, if you're using Christ and you're not representing true knowledge, you're a false Christ. If you're using Christ in the Ahamic representing true knowledge, then you're a true Christ. Nevertheless, Louis Mong had it proclaimed in heaven and earth that he was the Christ, which is the Ahamic expression for the all knowledge, and that's where he fucked up. The Lord said, Now therefore Louis Mong was from this time forth a false god in heaven and on earth. And Louis Mong commanded Thoth, his angel warrior, so Thoth is under Louis Mong, the false Christ. And Louis Mong commanded Thoth, 
his angel warrior in command of his earthly dominions to raise up tribes of warriors amongst mortals and by the inspiration of said thought these warriors were induced to call themselves Christians let me get it bigger man in case you can't see you know what I mean and Louis Mon commanded Thoth, his angel warrior, in command of his earthly dominions to raise up tribes of warriors among mortals. And by the inspiration of said Thoth, Thut Moses, these warriors were induced to call themselves Christians. So you see the connection between this. That's why Thoth said, I made you. I raised up these Christians for you. Then he raised up Muhammad against Christianity. Then they warred. And in between that. Are you so-called Negroes being enslaved? Because you refuse to put away all these false gods. Now, now I want to continue where we got cut off before we get back into this Prince Uriel Bay. We're just going to keep creeping in it. We're only going to do this for a couple more parts. You know what I'm saying? I said I was going to get through this and this, but man, that's going to be a 15-part series and we got to keep moving. So, origin of Muhammadism, right? Muhammad. Satanism from Hasetis to Rome. All right, so we got some of this. So we're going to jump in where we got cut off at. Again, we're just talking about now for upward a thousand years, the angel warrior Gabriel alias Thoth. So is he calling himself Gabriel? Just like the other angels are naming themselves these popular names for the mortals. All right, so now let's jump here. Let's go to verse 21 here. Actually 20. But Gabriel received no reply to his message and so on. In course of time, he called together 10,000 angel warriors and they assembled in a place called Kala Horeb, the place of seven steps in Hada. Gabriel spake before them saying, remember Gabriel is Thoth. So Thoth spoke, spoke before them saying, I'm going to say Thoth so we don't get confused. Here will I establish my kingdom of heaven and forever. I will show this false Christ what I can do. All right. So again, this is when he's raising up Muhammad. And this is when they're going against the, their false Christ. Which, you know, is only, it's only relative in the sense of him not also being a false Christ. Why? Because he's not using a name that he's not saying I am all knowledge. So he's trying to avoid it. That's his loophole. So he says, Mark ye the great power of a God is to establish a great foothold on the earth. The natural instant increase will soon populate a heavenly kingdom. So Thoth is saying right here, man, check it out, man. The great power of a God is to establish a great foothold on the earth. A great foothold on the earth. A great foothold on the earth. That's their mark of this, you know, greatness of their own greatness is establishing everything. They want everything. They need everything. Now he says, for listen, I in the old Egyptian libraries are books and tablets and manuscripts that will show the perversity of the constant Constantine Bible. This is the New Testament hijack Bible. So he's going against his big homie full on, full on. Now then I have established my prophet, I will cause mortal legions of Arabians to possess these libraries, especially Alexandria's. So now we're just talking about Arabinia. <laughs> and when we're talking Arabinia, we're talking Guatemala. And when we're talking Guatemala. Where's my Arabian map? Arabia. Oh, maybe it's right here. Oh, they just gave me the. Gave me back to this version. I always gotta find this thing again. Where is our Arabian? Here we go. Here we go. 
This is kind of small, but you see it right here, Arabinia, and that's what they're calling Africa or what, Northeast of Maxim Africa, Arabinia. So Thoth is referring to so-called Africa, and that is a map right there at the OSB. You can get it bigger here again and see it, Arabinia, all right? All right. Let's get the rest of this right quick. All right, so let's just get this. Let's get this. Let's get it. Again, after that matter, the angel Gabriel or Thoth boasted, and he made 10,000 uh, his own. 10,000 his holy council, and from among them, he appointed marshals, captains, generals. He did all that, all right? He got his throne. He crowned himself Gabriel, God of heaven and earth. All right, God of heaven and earth. And then he crowned 10 lords. And these are the 10 lords he crowned. Now it says in verse uh, chapter one, the Lord said, Gabriel rose, raised upon the earth one Muhammad. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. So Thoth raised up Muhammad and inspired him through his angel host. And the angels inspired Muhammad to go every month in the year into the cave of Hara, in which occasion Gabriel came in person and talked with Muhammad who had suites in great perfection. So we got this part last time where Thoth is now raising up Muhammad through the alias Gabriel, his alias, not his name, but his alias. All right. So now we can catch up to where we got cut off. So he must have been right about it. So Muhammad, being under inspiration of the God Gabriel and his angels, collected to t together thousands and tens of thousands of warriors and went forth to conquer. Muhammad, being under inspiration of the God Gabriel, angel Gabriel Thoth, and his angels collected together thousands and ten thousands of warriors and went forth to conquer. And the angel host of Gabriel went forth with Muhammad's army and inspired them to such a degree that they were without fear or hesitation. And Gabriel's host of angels went into the armies that fought against Muhammad and inspired them with fear and cowardice and panic. And it came to pass that wherever Muhammad went, there was sure victory, the like of which had not been for many centuries. So here comes the Ishmaelites. Now, Louis Malin, the false Christ, had previously destroyed, for the most part, the Alexandrian Library. Now, you got this history coming in. Egypt destroyed, Alexandrian being destroyed by who? Louis Malin had previously destroyed the Christians, right? The Alexandrian Library, having inspired a mortal priest, Cotunius, Cotunius to do the work. All right, so we got to connect that. And Louis Malin now perceiving the triumph of Muhammad inspired 300 monks and priests to go throughout Hellist or Greece and Arabinia, Africa, uh, Northeast Africa, Amexum, and destroy the ancient state records and libraries. And they went thither and accomplished the destruction. Muhammad was shown this by Gabriel and he used it as a battle cry for his soldiers. And Louis Mong now declared war in heaven against the false God, Gabriel, in, and in not many years, they both carried their war down to earth, contending for certain localities on the earth. As for the other two false gods, Kabbalakis, alias Buddha, and Enochisa, alias Brahma, they had been in war against each other for over 600 years. Now had these four false gods possession now had these four false gods possession of the whole earth, at least, wherever they were mortal kingdoms and empires. So this is what's happening on the earth. It says now, these have four false gods possession. Uh -huh. So now in reference to the faith is the faith is they're considering those that believe and have faith in the creator above the barrier in China and venue. So China and India. They were no longer identified with the kingdoms or governments, but lived about in scattered families. So 
these Asiatics of China and India were now scattered out of there. In Arabinia, Hellas, and Europa, Greece, Europe, they were, Hellas is also Asia, they were scattered in all directions from the time of Joshua's death in Jerusalem. They began to migrate mostly towards the west. So now they're migrating from India and China to the west. And these called themselves Israelites and Jews. Body bag. So these scattered families, you're being scattered by this frequency, by these warring angels. Now you're moving to the West and they call themselves Israelites. Nevertheless, many of the Israelites and Jews so-called were apostates. In fact, eating flesh and marrying with other peoples. Eating flesh and marrying with other energies. Other frequencies. Eating flesh, not just swine, flesh, which goes back to my man, Higher March Drop. We got to get off this flesh, man, real talk. We got to vibrate with our sacred trees, real spill. Now check. Now after the fall of the great empire, Egypt, her people migrated westward, hundreds of thousands of them, and they were settled in the Western Europa, where these people married with the Aborigines. After their great empire fell, they married into their aborigines. And it says their offspring were called druids, picks. So now saying that these people are marrying into the aborigines and they're calling these people picks. But were these picks representative of all these particular, whatever the case is? But it's saying that their fallen empire, the fall, nevertheless, many of these Israelites and so-called Jews, all right? Now, after the fall of the great empire, Egypt, her people migrated west and it's saying that they married into these aborigines and here comes these offsprings and they're putting them all in this one big category. Egypt has the Yahans, the Johns. So you have the Picts and the Johns. Who is Preston John? Right. Now, whatever they hijack in his titles, you know what I'm saying? We can at least appreciate that there's a play play in here. There's some babies in this bathwater. That could possibly be connected to some Johns and some Picts, all of which are Egyptian names preserved to this day. All right. Now, when the faith is were moved by the inspiration of God, the Creator, or the, maybe the God, the Son of the Creator, as they refer to, to have no more kings and to flee away from the Christian warriors, they came among the people above mentioned. The apostolic faith is married with them and their offspring were the forefathers of those now called French, German, Rus, Russian, English. Man. Man. So God, son of Jehovah, so this God, son of the creator had said, suffer the apostates to so marry for here will I find a way to raise up disbelievers in the false Christ and they shall ultimately become believers in the creator only for in so much as I have suffered them to become scattered. So will I appropriate them as seed seed to quicken all the races of men to comprehend the all one. So these faith is these people of the creator have been scattered. So will the creator appropriate them as seed to quicken all the races, to bring it all together, and for all to understand the all one creator. And it continues into this thought frequency now. All right, so we have some good time here. We have some good time. We got a little Karabrana guys, the king of Moab. All right, we got into the shell. We got, you know, some basic understanding of the Zion Compact Bible Dictionary. Ham, the youngest son of Noah. Progenitor, father of all the dark races, but not these particular Negroes here. So what is Zondervan getting at? What's really going on? Who's being scattered? Who's being rolled upon with their one world order? And why isn't Shem a part of this? Why is Moab saying they're representing for all of Shem? How can Moab represent for Shem? Really? I mean, really, man? 
it gets real simple in the system is the top of color wagon is going to show you that this is just part three you check out the whole series but sister take it away she she she's showing the brother from the uh, more science tv he's talking about moroccans and moors and let's just get this it's three minutes So that you understand what's going on. Because you don't, in this part, it doesn't actually say more. So you're going to say, well, what does that have to do with us? You know, and I hear Moors and Moorish Americans mentioned at all. True. But it does say the Moabites. And, you know, excuse me, I'm battling a bit of a cold, but I'm going to make it happen. I don't have the small one, but in this in this book here, Noah Dry Lee, The Exhumant of a Nation, mm -hmm. has the Quran question 101s, uh, Quran questions for Moorish Americans is it the official title, and question number 30, what was the nationality of Ruth? Ruth was a Moabitess. What is the modern name for Moabites? Moroccans. Okay, so I just wanted to put that on the record to show that the modern name for Moroccans, I mean, the modern name for Moabites is Moroccans. The modern name for Moabite is Moroccan. So when you're rocking with this Moroccan empire, you're rocking with the empire of Moab. Who's Moab rocking with? I mean, the prophet that, you know, the prophet of Moab told you that. Who's Moab rocking with? Noble Drew Ali says it right here. All right. The inhabitants of Africa are the descendants of the ancient Canaanites from the land of Canaan. Old man Cush and his family are the first inhabitants of Africa who came from the land of Canaan. His father Ham and his family were second. Then came the word Ethiopia, which means the demarcation line in the dominion of Amexum. Amexum's the whole thing. So there's lines of division the first true and divine name of Africa is this a maxim they're calling it. So they're calling again your Americas where they found you as Northwest a maxim Africa. So this is West Africa to them. It's the dominion of Ham to them. But what's the reality? What's the reality? Where we at? Where we at? All right. Let's go. And also, earlier in that, matter of fact, let me just, well, I don't need to read it, but it says, what is our nationality? Moorish American. Why are we Moorish American? Because we are descendants of Moroccans and born in America. So, you have Moabites, ancient name. The descendants are called Moroccan. The modern name is called Moroccans. And we are the descendants of Moroccans, Moors. <laughs> But Moors are Moroccans are Moabites, so you're descendants of Moabites. So when you recruit people in your science temple, are you recruiting Moabites or is that just leadership? Or do you recruit all so-called Negroes who are not in this Ham lineage or this Moab Lot lineage, but in a Abraham, Isaac, Jacob lineage, you recruit them? as Moabites to serve Moabite gods? To serve Thoth? Just real quick, this is going. Um, the purpose of life is to know yourself and love yourself and trust yourself and be yourself. Shout out to Yogi T. But um, let's get back to it. So, just to summarize, boom, we have more bites, more modernly known as Moroccans, even more modernly known as Moors, Moorish Americans. Um, okay. Okay. So I mean, the brother pretty much laid it out as clear as day. As clear as day. Let's uh, jump in this. This is another uh, great link that we will uh, leave for you. Get the book! Noble Drew Ali and the Moorish oh, yeah. Science Temple of America. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. The melted, and his two daughters were with him, for he feared to dwell in Zoar, and he dwelt in a cave, he and his two daughters, 
and the firstborn said unto the younger, Our father is old, and there is not a man in the earth to come in unto us after the manner of all the earth. Come, let us make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him, that he may preserve the seed of our father. And they made their father drink wine that night. We got some and of the stars first, gone belly flop. Let's go. That the Moabites were given permission by the pharaohs to settle northwest Africa. Though we have not found the hard empirical evidence as of yet. So they haven't found the evidence that Thoth even gave them permission. But. We can point to instances like this and conclude reasonably based on the inference of presumption that the relationship between the Moabites and the Egyptians did exist. So you can prove that there's a relationship between the Moabites and the Hamites? And that gives you permission under the Pharaoh's permission beyond a reasonable doubt to settle the land? I mean, one more time that the Moabites were given permission by the pharaohs to settle northwest Africa. Though we have not found the hard empirical evidence as of yet, we can point to instances like this and conclude reasonably based on the inference of presumption that the relationship between the Moabites and the Egyptians did exist. That's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. To assimilate yourself with a hijacked Thoth celestial frequency. With hijacked Thoth celestial gods. Which reminds me, I wanted to also get from this sister. My sister who's kicking all this drop. Y'all go subscribe to Miss D and the Kappa Color Awakening. Let's get this quick drop, man. It's going to be a beautiful dismount we make. All courtesy of Drop Nation, of course. You know what I'm saying? Drop Nation don't sleep. Drop Nation is up. It's about 5 o'clock in the morning. Man, should I even try to sleep or should I just keep it rocking, man? So now I'm go for a nice map. run somewhere. I'm going to run somewhere, man. The Moabites, Moorish Americans' ancestors, from the land of Moab, which is right here. Let's check it. Um, you can look it up for yourself. Hit the Google real quick. Um, also known as, um, also right there is Canaan. And or also was known as Palestine, though it's being called Israel, but that's another subject, another topic. Uh, let's, let's deal with that another time. <laughs> oh, okay. The Moabites from the land of Moab received permissions from the pharaohs of Egypt. So, boom, they slide down to Egypt. Uh -huh. I like the pharaohs. Yeah, I like, like the pharaohs. Yeah, it's cool to, to, to chill out, inhabit. You can settle all in Northwest Africa. So, the people so it's cool Egypt, to take over all of this uh, Arabian. According, even though they don't got the hard proof, but they can prove a relationship with the Pharaoh, with Thoth in them. So Muhammad was raised by Thoth. We can also prove a relationship between you and Thoth. Came all through Northwest Africa, where it's known as Morocco. Okay, right? Morocco. Um, but it wasn't just this little area here that we, that we see now. When we see Morocco like this little sliver, or even just like this Northwest sliver. Um, it says their dominion and inhabitation extended from northeast, uh -huh. northeast, uh -huh. southwest Africa, oh, boom, Moab, right, uh -huh. across the Great Atlantis. Okay, to, to clarify, uh -huh. right now it says Atlantic Ocean, but in the ancient times it was actually a landmass there known as Atlantis. Right. So our people, our dominion, our empire was from north, northeast Africa and southwest Africa. Across this landmass known as Atlantis, <laughs> and onto the uh, the present North America, yeah, all that Central America, all that Mexico, all that South America, and all that. <laughs> Hold up, man! Did y'all just hear that? So remember our map. Remember this map that plays. Oh wait, that's not it. Here we go. Remember the map that plays? He just said, yeah, man. We started here in Canaan, and then we got permission from the pharaohs that we can't prove uh, to get this. And we also had this and this and this. <laughs> what about this? Did you have this too? Did you have this? You had everything, Morocco? The Moors had it all. 
How about we do the opposite of what the brother just said and say they started here. And when it fell, they then tried to get in over here and they were booted out by Joshua and then went there under permission of the new Pharaoh Tut Moses Thoth, six king, 18th dynasty. Let's go. So, okay, he did this, he did some of that. Now, this sister has some great drop on this Shamash, man. I wonder if I can get it quickly. My sister, my sister. I mean, man, this is just, you know, it's dope when you're surfing the wave because certain elements, man, just, you know, get electrified at the right times. It all starts to make sense. It all starts to make sense. Let's see, let's see. Oh, my sister's putting in work. I think she's in part 9 or 10 of this joint. All right, so... All right, remember the visions of Tabu Coco. Beautiful thing, man. I want to get to this cross and circle a little bit. She did three different drops on it. So let's see which one, man. I got I to gotta guess. I got to guess. Let's go with this. I see this one here. Let's go with this last one. Let's go. Yeah, the history of Shumash. Yeah, that's the one I want. The Santa Barbara mission is built. And now the sister's talking about Shumash. Land expedition. In connection with. Leva Let's go. Yeah. Okay, this is their history. 700 AD, the ancient Kamesh people settled, settled in Santa Barbara Bay. 1542. Juan Rodriguez explored California, making him the first European to make contact with the Kamesh and claimed the lands for Spain. For Spain, making contact with the Kamesh and claiming the land for Spain. So there's a connection, a treaty being made between these people of the Kamesh who might be following the same guy, Shamash or Kamash, C-H-E-M-A-S-H or O-S-H, however they say it. Remember the Moabite God, Kamash, Kamosh, Kamash. I don't know how to spell that. Kamash, something like that. Moab. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Kamash, Moab, idol. <laughs> right here. Popping on up on you. So Kamash was a national deity of the Moabites whose name most likely meant destroyer, subduer, fish god. Kamash, the ancient god of the Moabites. All right. That's all I needed. So when this sister is breaking down Kamash in relation to the circle and the cross, then you can see a correlation between the circle and the cross under the Pharaoh's permission and their god Kamash. Treaties with Spain. In 1769. Treaties of Tripoli. There was a Spanish land expedition. La Baja, California and reached the Santa Barbara Canal. 1770, the Spanish settled on the territory of the Kamesh. Mm. In, in 1776, the Santa Barbara B Mission is built and the Spanish M Mission System is established in Southern California. Quick belly flop. Okay, they all were sentenced to 10 years in the chain gang. So this is okay. all the history from the 17 and 1800s. So y'all go keep checking this sister out. She's doing amazing work. Subscribe. Truly amazing. I mean, I mean I'm saying I just truly appreciate the energy uh, for the creator that's coming out, man. So we got the Emerald Tablets. We'll keep digging on it. Man, let's make a nice dismount. Right here, right here, right here. Back at the Prince Uriel Bay. Let's start at the 20-minute mark. Get this dismount. Love to y'all. We're surfing away. This is part five of the Moor, the Moabite, the Muhammad, the Baphomet of Belus. Who is Belus? You know who Belus is. We just got Kamash. We just got Shamash. Surely we've gotten Belus. Surely we know Belus. Belus or Belos in classic Greek or classic Latin text. And in an Assyrian context refers to one or another purportedly ancient historical mythical Assyrian king, such king in part at least a 
euhemerization, euhemerization of the Babylonian Baal, Murdoch, Baalus, Baal and the dragon, Baal, Baal, Baal. So you got these Moab, they had many guys, not just one. Shumush, Kamush, Baalus, Baalas, Thoth, everybody. Everybody got down as long as they were against the actual confederacy and formed a confederacy from below the barrier against who the people that are not a part of this progenitor the people that are not a part of what shem's progenitor or should i say the hijack coming out of shem out of ishmael these ishmaelites the esau the edomites the moab the moabites the ammonites all this is shem and i said who really hijacked your ass? Your brothers that look like you. All right, let's go to dismount, man. Prince Yeria Bay. Moors on Mars, remember? Tearing the uh, dimension, tearing down the dimensional, tearing holes in the dimensional portals. They're opening up the dimensional tears. They're doing all kind of more time Montauk projects, which we're going to get into next. The Montauk projects of the Moors. Let's go. Again, as I said, if you uh, do any extensive research uh, if you look in um, their particular sections in the Library of Congress as well as the Department of State Library of which only very few people have access to um, that will give you more information on uh, the early years of the forming of the United States Corporation um, at any rate um, as I said, it was essentially or loosely termed Consokiwimos Regnum, which basically was an act. It was not uh, a name per se that was used for the United States. Because when you say Consokiwimos Regnum, uh, Consokiwimos basically means that um, we have united, meaning that we have done something, or a group of us have done something, meaning we nobles or we membrana of this particular thing that we have formed a particular confederacy they have formed let's go um uh or these united kingdoms and so united states Reino, um was the consolidation or convocation of these 13 kingdoms uh but what has happened with the whole united states aspect is that they've been using um, an indicative verbal action in the noun sense or nonsense if you will hmm. meaning that when they say the United States obviously they're using a definite article the and so therefore using it in the noun sense but when you say anything even according to the rules of English and you add an ed like I walked to the store obviously that indicates that you've done something as in a verbal action um, and therefore cannot be used uh, as a name or again in the noun sense. So to use United States, the ED, we united, we done something, is a adjective. You know what I'm saying? It's an action. We done something. It cannot be used as a name. It is fraudulent syntax grammar. And we will be getting back into the fraudulent syntax, syntax grammar of the corporate whole scheme and setup. The whole scheme is set up, set up by the people who created these dead languages, created these traps and snares, Thoth himself. So, these particular 13 kingdoms, uh, later misnamed colonies and states, had rulers known as Bais, Bais, or Begla Begs. Bays. Um, and uh, these Bay titles were titles that were also used by... Uh, the first ruler of China, known as Qin Bai, and of course also used uh, in the Osman, the Moorish Osman Empire, uh, more commonly known as the Ottoman Empire, uh, the Bai or Bay title. Yeah. But anyway, these Bays or Bay rulers on the continent in the 1760s and 70s were kings, princes, and governors owing allegiance to the Sultan at that time, uh, Sayyid ibn Abdul Mahdi. Sahid, so we got this other Sahid, you know, breaking down the connection between Hermes, Trimagistus, and Muhammad. Now he's saying that 
These bays pay tribute to the Sultan. Now that Preston Don King David pay tribute to the Sultan. Do you, so-called Negro, pay tribute to the Sultan? Do they recruit you in these more Zion temples and say that we pay tribute to the Sultan? Who pays tribute to Baal? Jamash. Thoth. Same energy hijacking. The straight, direct energy transfer flow above the barrier between the creator and the seeds. The everlasting seeds. Mohammed the 17th, uh, who ruled between 1757 and 1790 from Marrakesh. Now, Marrakesh at that time was uh, Philadelphus or Philadelphia, uh, which was both, uh, this was a part of Mauritania or Mauritania. And Mauritania was actually in North and South Dakota, uh, here in North America. And uh, of course, Marrakesh, as I said, was Philadelphia. And Marrakesh, which later became known as Morocco, uh, means uh, sons of Cush. And, uh, and so um, this royal family, or convocation of royal families, rather, the 13 royal families, uh, some of the names, if you read in the uh, imperial records or the continental records, uh, as opposed to the congressional records, um, some of the names were Agenor, uh, Agathokies, um, Ayak, Barca, which, by the way, Barca is another name or an ancient name for Chicago. Um, and mm. after Barca, it became known as Libya. Or, uh, Chicago is Libya, is Egypt, which is why you're finding Grand Canyon, uh, you know what I'm saying, Egyptian artifacts all throughout Illinois. This is Libya. Do I have to pull out my Hyborian map and show you Egypt here and the Grand Canyon here? It started here. This is Atlantis. And the people, the Moorish people, were known as Lachabim at that time. Uh, but anyway, as I said, one of the names, Ayak, the English equivalent, believe it or not, would be Ajax. So what they've done is the Albion has reduced many of these royal names and titles to toilet cleansers and other derogatory things, um, which I find to be very interesting. Now, also the name Agathokies, which, as I said, was one of the names of the royal families, is where we get the Aga title for governor, which is, of course, also used in the, uh, the Turkish language. Aga, 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 Aga. Where have you hearing Aga? Back to E.A. Wallace Budge, Cabra Nagas, who says what? About the Aga, Moab. And he was the father of the Moabites and Agarines. Lot is the father of the Aga, Aga. Agarines, Agarines, let go. Language as well. Um, but anyway, as I said, many of these legal documents uh, were not in the lingua anglicae or the English language uh, until actually a century later. So, um, again, you're looking at uh, the time of the federal Christian European influence under bankruptcy reconstruction between 1861 and 1878 which was one of the reasons, apart from many reasons, of the Civil War, because it was to give them enough time to actually change or alter many of the salient records um, to, as I said, to translate them, to omit things by, again, omission or commission. And um, so it gave them enough time to pray and alter these records and to ultimately give you the popularized versions that you read today in your miseducation uh, system. And so the original, of course, is always under lock and key, and you get the neutered version or, or neutered translation. But back to 1774, when the Corporate Family Trust was uh, organized um, or created, uh, one of the main reasons for the convocation or consolidation was due to the fact that the Moorish sway in the Americas was on the fast track of decline because of the 300 years continental wars between uh, the Franciscan Dutch and the Mossarabs. The Mossarabs is basically another term, a name for uh, Cretan or Christian Spaniards. Uh, now, during this time, during the 300 years continental wars, 
Uh, you had many of the older generations of Moors who were dying off. Many were prisoners of war. Uh, the newer generations were being born in war camps um, and were now being nationally lobotomized via Cretan reclassification and socio-behavioral modification. Uh, and this is what Prophet Nobudra Ali is referring to in chapter 47, verses 16 and 17, when he tells us that through sin and disobedience, every nation has suffered slavery due to the fact that they honored not the Cretan principles of their, of their fathers or forefathers. Uh, and this is why the nationality of the Moors was taken away from them in 1774, and the words Negro, Black, and Colored were given to the Asiatics of America, uh, who were of Moorish descent. Don't just pan that over, who are Moorish descent. No, 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 no. They are not all Moabite descent. So what you are doing is having a prophet who is doing what? Saving his people. Waking these Moabites up and saying, wait, you're the Moroccans. You're, you're great. Let's go. But then you classify, oh, everybody else is more too. So, you know, every, nah, because when the other races, when the other lineages, when the other seeds wake up and they realize they've been hijacked before this invasion that you're talking with this, with this colony before or after your 13 Moorish colonies were then hijacked, you were already hijacking with this vision right here. With this vision right here, then you too, after your treaties, after you made a deal for the living room, after you made a deal for the bedroom of the house and let the invader in, then you still wanted yours, and they said, no, no, no. Um, and uh, so anyway, but the, the loss of nationality, even though it's understood that the, the nationality of the Moors was taken away in 1774, it's important to understand that the nationality meant the majority of Moors and not all of the Moors, including, for example, the royals uh, of the continental, what later became the Continental Congress, and about a thousand Moorish factions. Um, but understanding the seriousness of the situation, these Moors uh, of the royal convocation, uh, was again the fundamental reason for one, the formation of the Corporate Family Trust, the National Trust, um, in again what later became the United States, and two, the establishing of the federal political system for the Albion Mail, uh, as this was a part of the Moore's C3 Communications Operation Command Stratagem, or military strategy, uh, that was used to, as strange as it may sound to some, um, it was to ensure the survival of future generations. As strange, yeah, it does sound strange because you're not assuring the survival of future generations with this. You're assuring the survival of Ham and Cush and Moab. This is not for everybody, but you see how they're trying to throw you in there at the very end.